Okay, so good morning again. This is Francisco Caliwan Jr. And today, our topic is investment in debt securities. And we shall be guided by the provisions of IFRS 9, Financial Instruments, IAS 32, Financial Instruments Presentation, and IFRS 7, Financial Instruments Disclosures. Okay, so what is a debt security? A debt security is a debt instrument issued by the government or a corporation as it borrows money, such as a government or corporate bonds and notes. Typically, a debt security has, number one, an interest rate that specifies the periodic interest payments, number two, maturity date, and number three, maturity value. So this uh, distinguishes a debt security from equity security. Holders of debt securities are called creditors, as against the holders of equity securities, they are called um, owners. And then investment in debt securities are presented in the financial statements as financial assets. This is the same with equity securities. So all securities, whether debt or equity uh, securities, are presented in the financial statement uh, using the line item financial asset. Okay, so now, when do we recognize an investment in debt securities? Actually, all financial assets, whether equity or debt securities, have the same recognition criteria. According to IFRS 9, an entity shall recognize a financial asset in its statement of financial position when and only when the entity becomes a party to the contractual provisions of the instrument, meaning unless the entity becomes a party to the contract the financial asset must not be recognized. Now, the most typical way to become a party to the contract or to the contractual provisions is to purchase an investment or to purchase a financial asset. Now, after recognizing the investment in the books, we classify them. So, an entity shall classify financial assets based on both, number one, the entity's business model for managing the financial assets or what we call the business model test and the contractual cash flow characteristics of the financial asset or the SPPI test. SPPI means solely payment of principal and interest. So the entity's business model is determined at a level that reflects how groups or portfolio of financial assets are managed together to achieve a particular objective. So it refers to how an entity or the company manages its financial assets to generate cash flows. We actually have three business models. No? So we have contractual cash flow collection, selling or both collection of contractual cash flows and to sell. So when we say collect contractual cash flow, it is actually collection of the principal and interest. When we say to sell, so maybe the business model of an entity is to sell financial assets when opportunity from profit taking arises. Limbawa, tumaas yung fair value because of fluctuations in fair values and interest rates. And uh, the third one, the hybrid, so both collecting cash flows, payment of principal and interest, and selling the asset when opportunity arises. So the contractual payments give rise on a specified dates to cash flows that are solely payment of principal and interest on the principal outstanding. So this is the SPPI test. So now let's discuss the specific classifications of investment in the securities. So after considering the business model test and the SPPI test, we now have, we now have these three classifications. So number one, the amortized cost. Number two, the fair value through other comprehensive income. And number three, the fair value through profit or loss. Okay, so when can we classify an investment at amortized cost? The financial asset is held within a business model whose objective is to hold financial assets in order to collect contractual cash flows. So that is the business model. And the contractual terms of the financial asset give rise on a specified dates to cash flows that are solely payments of principal and interest on the principal amount outstanding. So basically, the intention of the company is just to collect contractual cash flows. And the contractual cash flows are the principal and interest. Amortized cost, because the asset will be presented um, at amortized cost is the amount recognized at initial recognition, so that's the cost, 
minus principal repayment plus or minus the amortization of any discount or premium. So later we will discuss the initial cost of um, investments and um, amortization of any discount or premium. Next, when can we classify an investment as at fair value through other comprehensive income? So the financial asset is held within a business model whose objective is achieved by both collecting contractual cash flows and selling financial assets and the contractual terms of the financial asset give rise on specified dates to cash flows that are solely payments of principal and interest on the principal amount outstanding. So an entity designates this debt investments at fair value through other comprehensive income if the entity intends to both collect the contractual cash flows that are payment of principal and interest and sell the assets when opportunity arises. So say for example, the fair value of the uh, security during the year increased. So maybe the company um, can be um, influenced or maybe influenced to sell the investment. Okay, so finally, that investment at fair value through profit or loss. Actually, this is simple, no? If it is not measured at amortized cost or fair value through other comprehensive income, then the classification is investment at fair value through profit or loss. So, that investments at FBPL are those that are held in the business model for selling financial assets when opportunity from profit taking arises because of fluctuations in uh, fair values and interest rates. So the intention actually of the company is um, short term profit or loss. Thus, uh, these debt investments are primarily held for trading purposes. Okay, so now that we're through with the classification, let's proceed with the measurement. So initial measurement. Investment in debt security is initially recognized at fair value plus in the case of a financial asset not at fair value through profit or loss, transaction costs that are directly attributable to the acquisition of the financial asset. Um, technically, all financial assets, whether equity or debt securities, have the same um, concept of initial measurement. So they are all measured at fair value. Now, the concept whether to capitalize the transaction cost depends upon the classification. So for um, profit or loss classification, so equity, at profit or loss, and the security at profit or loss, transaction costs are expensed outright. Um, although the, the standard is silent about um, the reason behind well, for me, the reason is that the uh, held for trading uh, classification at fair value to profit or loss are trading securities. So, since trading siya, buy and sell, transaction costs are uh, maybe uh, recognized as selling costs. So, expensed outright, not capitalized. Then, for all other classifications, um, transaction costs are added as directly attributable cost. If the cost exceeds the face value, the difference is called premium. If the cost is less than the face value, the difference is called discount. So an investment in the securities may be acquired over or um, higher or lower than the face value. And um, if the acquisition cost is different from the fair value, then there is premium or discount. Actually, this is affected by the um, interest rates. Later, we will discuss how interest rates affect the initial measurement of um, investment in the securities. Premium and discount are amortized over the term of the debt instrument using the effective interest method for investment in debt security at amortized cost and at fair value through OCI only. So, meaning, um, the concept of discount and premium is um, the same all throughout the three classifications. So, kahit pa fair value to profit or loss yan, OCI or amortized cost, there is discount or premium. But, the amortization of discount and premium is only applicable to debt 
instrument at amortized cost and debt instrument at fair value through OCI, meaning walang amortization ng discount or premium si fair value through profit or loss. And CIFR is 9, uh, requires that the amortization of the discount or premium over the life of the security is to be uh, done using the effective interest method only. This method considers both the nominal rate and the effective rate. Now, after the initial measurement, there is also the concept of subsequent measurement. So this is the measurement subsequent to initial recognition. So after initial recognition, investment in the security is subsequently measured at number one, amortized cost for the debt security um, classified at amortized cost and fair value for debt security classified at fair value through OCI and fair value through profit or loss. Debt investments at amortized cost and fair value through OCI are subject to impairment. Um, meaning, um, debt investment at fair value through profit or loss is not subjected to impairment. The reason is that um, di ba, impairment loss is reported in profit or loss. E, yung investment at fair value through profit or loss kasi all changes in fair value, fluctuation in fair value, and uh, interest rates um, are already taken up in profit or loss. So, hindi na siya nag-take up ng impairment loss. Okay, so now that we're through with the initial and subsequent measurement of the securities, let's now discuss some transactions affecting the um, investment account. So, uh, first, let's discuss investment in the security at amortized cost. So the first thing that we will discuss about this classification is interest. So interest received is calculated by applying the nominal rate, the face value, while interest income is calculated by applying the effective rate to the gross carrying amount. The difference of the interest received and the interest income is the amortization of discount or premium. Well, the concept of nominal and effective rate is no longer new to you because this has already been discussed to you. Uh, in your accounting for receivable. So, alam na how to prepare amortization table and how to amortize discount or premium. But, um, short background lang, review. So, when we say interest received, this is the amount of interest received by the creditor from the debtor as stipulated in the bond indenture. So, when we say nominal rate, it is also called stated rate or stipulated rate because it is um, given in the contract, in the bond that the creditor will receive and the debtor will um, pay um, interest at that particular interest rate. Kaya nga, if uh, an, uh, a bond or a note is non-interest bearing, so meaning walang nominal interest rate. When we say effective rate, um, this is the rate of interest uh, which is used in the computation of interest income. This is also called if, um, effective rate, market rate, or yield rate. Um, even if the bond or the note is non-interest bearing, it doesn't mean that the creditor will not record interest income because what is not uh, present in the scenario is only the nominal rate but not the effective rate. So, effective rate, market rate, yield rate, naging given yan. Kaya nga, um, again, in your accounting for receivable, when we say um, realistic interest rate, sino yung tinatawag na realistic? The nominal or the effective? The nominal. If the nominal rate is equal to the effective rate, Therefore, no discount or premium, the nominal rate is realistic. Ang interest na pinag-usapan ng creditor at debtor ay equal sa interest ng uh, financial asset sa market. If it is unrealistic, needless to say, it's different. The nominal rate is different from the effective rate. Okay? So, the difference of the interest received and interest income is your amortization during the period. So, if the debt security is purchased at a premium, meaning the acquisition cost is higher than the face value, 
So the interest income is interest received less the premium amortization. So lumalabas ang interest received mo mas malaki kesa sa interest income mo. Kaya paliliitin mo ngayon sa interest income through the amortization of the premium. If the debt security is purchased at a discount, interest income is equal to interest received plus the discount amortization. Kasi nga, interest received is lower. Pero ang nasusunod, interest income. So, iha-adjust mo si interest received para maging equal siya sa interest income through the discount amortization. So, simple illustration lang. Interest received is 10 while interest income is 12. So, ano to? Discount amortization. So, what do we do? To record the interest received, we have debit cash, 10, and credit interest income, 10. To adjust the interest income, kasi ano dapat ang interest income? 12. So, we are, um, we need to amortize the discount. So, anong magiging adjusting entry natin? Debit tayo ng investment account and credit tayo ng interest income account for the difference of 2 pesos. So, after the adjusting entry, interest income is now 12 pesos. Yung isa naman, illustration 4, premium amortization. So, interest received, for example, is 15, while interest income is 12. So, to record the interest received, we have cash 15 and interest income 15. Pero nono daw dapat ang interest income only 12. So, to adjust the interest income, we amortize the premium um, the premium, so debit interest income by 3 pesos, so lili its interest income and credit uh, investment account by 3 pesos. Kaya nga, to, to sum it all, no? premium amortization decreases the investment account, Ayan, no? credit, credit investment, whereas uh, discount amortization increases the investment account. Kanina, ang ginawa mo dyan is you debit the investment account. Okay. Okay, next. If a debt security is acquired between interest payment dates, the investor pays in addition to the purchase price of the security the amount of accrued interest from the immediately preceding interest payment date up to the date of acquisition. And this is recorded by a debit to interest receivable or interest income account. When we say uh, acquired between interest payment dates, say for example, um, the interest payment dates are December 31, 2019 and December 31, 2020. But we acquired the investment on October 1, 2020. So, um, on top of the acquisition cost, the creditor will pay the accrued interest. And the accrued interest in this scenario is the interest from December 31, 2019 from the last payment of interest date up to the uh, acquisition date which is October 1, 2020. So we have an accrued interest. So recorded by a debit to interest receivable or interest income account. Uh, for me, mas maganda uh, interest income account. So that um, pag na-record mo yung interest payment on December 31, 2020, credit na lang lahat sa interest income. Okay? Okay, last for interest. If the date of a debt security does not coincide with the accounting period, debt securities with interest payment dates other than December 31, the carrying value of the bond must be updated at December 31 by recording interest receivable, interest income, and the related discount or premium amortization. So, instead of debiting cash, eh, kasi nga, the interest payment date uh, does not coincide with December 31. So, by December 31, Instead of debiting cash, we debit interest receivable and credit income and debit or credit the amortization as the case may be just to update the carrying value of the bond. Okay, after interest, we have change in fair value. So generally, fair value change for investment that amortize costs are not recognized unless uh, there is a decrease in fair value and the decrease is considered as impairment loss using the expected loss model. Next, gain or loss on sale. So, gain or loss on sale of debt security at amortized cost is calculated um, the same with all other assets being sold. So, it's the difference of the net selling price and the carrying value of the investment. And the gain or loss is taken to profit or loss. 
Impairment. So, impairment is recognized in profit or loss as impairment gains or losses using the expected credit loss model. And for presentation purposes, investment in debt security at amortized cost is presented as non-current asset at its amortized cost. And interest income is in profit or loss, whereas interest receivable is a current asset. Now, how about investment in debt security at fair value through other comprehensive income? As regards interest, so interest received, interest income, amortization of discount and premium, same with investment at amortized cost. Okay? For change in fair value, so except uh, impairment losses, so we need to specify whether the change in fair value is the Annual change. When we say annual change in fair value, that's fair value by December 31 last year versus the fair value by December 31 this year. That is the annual change in fair value. And that is presented as unrealized gain or loss, as the case may be, in other comprehensive income section of the statement of comprehensive income. Picture out mo yung statement of comprehensive income, di ba? You start with revenue per sales minus cost of sales. You have gross income minus operating expenses, including taxes. You have your profit or loss. And from that amount, you add or you deduct other comprehensive income or loss. Doon to masasama. So, other comprehensive income or loss, add or deduct mo yun sa profit or loss, you will get your total comprehensive income. Now, we also have the concept of cumulative change. This is the um, fair value change from the acquisition date up to the latest reporting date. So, presented as unrealized gain or loss in other comprehensive income pa din, pero nasa equity ng statement of financial position. So, again, no, annual change is in OCI in the statement of comprehensive income whereas cumulative change are accumulated is accumulated in other comprehensive income in equity in the statement of financial position number three gain or loss on sale as regards fboci debt security when the asset is the recognized or reclassified Pag sinabing reclassified, tatanggalin mo na siya sa pagiging FBOCI at ililipat mo siya sa ibang classification. Changes in fair value previously recognized in OCI and accumulated in equity are reclassified to profit or loss having the same effect on profit or profit and loss as if it were measured at amortized cost. So whether FBOCI or amortized cost ang classification ng debt security, gain or loss is the same. So, technically, diba, if we are to um, study the formula, sino yung gain or loss on sale ng FBOCI debt security? It's the accumulated in equity. Bakit siya ang nagiging gain or loss on sale? Kasi technically, siya yung um, difference ng selling price and carrying amount. Pansinin mo ha, the, the cumulative changes in profit Sorry, the cumulative changes in fair value na nasa equity, hindi siya napupunta sa profit or loss. Tama? E di ba pag nagbebenta ka, dapat the difference of the selling price and the carrying value ay napupunta sa profit or loss. Therefore, itong kino ina-accumulate mo na nasa equity, ngayon lang siya mapupunta sa profit or loss. Okay? So, Inaccumulate mo sa equity, ngayon, pag binenta mo, ililipat mo sa profit or loss. Next, impairment. So, same with amortized cost um, in, in profit or loss using the expected credit loss model. And finally, um, for presentation purposes, investment in debt security at FBOCI is a non-current asset measured at fair value. So, whatever is the fair value at year-end, so, kumbaga, mawawala na lahat yung, yung uh, adjustments mo sa kanya with regard to amortization during the year. Kasi sa dulo, fair value pa din naman ang gagamitin for reporting purposes. Then, interest income is profit or loss and interest receivable is current asset. And finally, 
investment and debt security at fair value through profit or loss. So interest. So this is different from amortized cost and OCI. Why? Because for um, investment at fair value through profit or loss, wala tayong concept ng amortization. So interest received and interest income are calculated by applying the nominal rate to the face value. Any discount or premium is not amortized. Eh kasi nga hindi naman long term ang intention mo sa kanya. Number two, change in fair value except for impairment losses. So presented as unrealized gain or loss in the profit or loss section of the statement of comprehensive income. And gain or loss on sale, the difference of net selling price and the carrying value of the investment. The carrying value here is the fair value mo uh, December 31 last year. So notice no. For investment at fair value through OCI, the gain or loss is the accumulated um, unrealized gain or loss in equity and then transferred to profit or loss. Yun yung gain or loss mo. But for investment at uh, debt security at fair value through profit or loss, your gain or loss on sale is only the difference of the net selling price and the latest fair value mo uh, by December 31 last year. Now, anong kaibahan? In, in investment at fair value to profit or loss kasi, the difference in fair value every year are uh, reported in profit or loss. Therefore, hindi mo nababalikan ang mga accumulated. Wala siyang na-accumulate sa equity kasi every year, the difference in fair value is reported in profit or loss. Unlike FDOCI, na the difference in fair value every year are accumulated in equity. Therefore, pag binenta, tsaka lang siya napupunta sa profit or loss. So, technically, ang konsepto, almost the same eh. Okay? Sa profit or loss, staggered lang yung pag uh, re record ng profit or loss. Sa OCI, bagsakan, isang bagsakan sa dulo when the, the financial asset is the recognized. Impairment, not applicable, as mentioned a while ago. And then for presentation purposes, investment in debt security at FBPL is presented under current assets at fair value. Why current asset? Kasi trading. So short-term gains and losses ang um, intention. And then interest income is presented in profit or loss and interest receivable is presented under current assets. Okay, so last 